Okay, so in this video we're going to uh, look at the output file from um, our game's water job that we've run. So here I am in my uh, root directory, my home directory here. Um, type ls, yep, so here's my output file. So I want to read this text file. So this is just a text file, it has the dot log, so this is the output of our uh, water optimization that we ran. So we're just going to read the file with one of two reading programs, um, more or less. Either one works. Um, less has a few more features than more. You can read about both of the programs by typing the, uh, by looking at the manual page. So to get a Linux man pa manual page, you type man, short for manual, and then the command that you'd like to learn about, like less. And then this gives you lots of information about less. And again, you can press the uh, space bar down here to bring up the next page of text. So press the space bar again, there's more pages of text, and you can hit Q when you're done reading what you want to read. Alright, so we're going to type more, and I'm going to ls again, so list my files, type more, I'm going to select the file here by left clicking and dragging, then I'm going to right click here on my screen, I'm going to paste selection, so there we go, I don't have to type all that, and I hit enter, and here we go. So here's what's contained inside that file. So first off, it just sort of prints off a whole bunch of um, information related to setting up the run. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Now when we get to this section, this is the game's title screen, and it'll tell you about what version you're running and that kind of stuff. And then here's some um, credits, who wrote the stuff. And then right here, this bit's pretty important. It says, echo the first few input cards. Um, so this is reading your input file, and it's a good idea to check this and make sure that this stuff looks like the file that you think you submitted to games and that it's reading everything correctly. Then games is going to go through and tell you a little bit about things that it has gotten from what you entered in the input file. So it's going to tell you about basis options. Oh, we set the basis at N31, which and N, the I gauss, is 6. So this is a 631 basis set. Um, We've added one nd function, so n is the number. We've added d functions on uh, the heavy atoms. We've added one p function on the hydrogens. Uh, f for faults for diffuse functions on the s's, and faults for diffuse functions on the p's. And the number of f functions that we added, zero. So there we go. And then it gives us our run title, and then it tells us stuff about the molecule. Um, this is the distance matrix right here, so this will tell you the distance between any two atoms. So Suppose I wanted to know the distance between oxygen atom 1 and hydrogen atom 2. Then I just find the corresponding row and column in the matrix, and here it is. It's 0.97, and this unit is in angstroms. So the structure that we enter entered has a bond length between oxygen atom number 1 and hydrogen atom number 2 of 0.97 angstroms. Okay, the next screen. So, um, by the way, I'm scrolling down each time to just hitting the space bar, and right down here it tells us where we are in the file. So we are about 15% of the way through the file. If you ever go, need to go back, you just type the B key, and it will take you back. So here's where we were, looking at that distance matrix, 13%. So I hit the space bar again. Here's the next screen full of information. Now the game's file is telling us something about our atomic basis set. So remember, you, we are using the 631G basis set. So we're using Gaussian functions. Each Gaussian function is going to have an exponent for the Gaussian function, so those are shown in this column. And then some of those Gaussian functions, you take those different Gaussians and you add them together, right? So we contract them. And so there's a number that we use to multiply a particular Gaussian function. That's called a contraction coefficient. So Gaussian functions are a number times the Gaussian function raised, um, and that Gaussian function has some exponent. So here they are. So this is a 631G basis set. So the core orbitals on oxygen, we're going to use six Gaussian primitives to represent that. So here they are, one through six. And here they're exponents and contraction coefficients. Then we split the valence orbitals. So here are the valence shells. And um, we're going to have three, one, two, three um, shells representing um, one valence. And then we're going to have a third that is more diffuse. So you see that these are tight with big exponents, and then this one is loose with a small exponent. Okay, So there's the 6, 3, 1, and then we've added this set of D functions on as well. So D function. There we go. And um, it's got an exponent of 0.8 and a coefficient of 1. Then we go down here, here's the same information for hydrogen. Hydrogen doesn't have any core orbitals, they're just valence orbitals, so this is the 3 and the 1, the tight functions, and the uh, loose functions. 
And so then it goes down here, tells you some interesting information about the total number of basis set shells, well, 10, the number of, number of Cartesian Gaussian basis functions. So this number is that um, how much calculation you're going to have to do based on how many basis functions you have. So we have 25 primitive Gaussian basis functions. And in those two electron integrals, we're going to have to do a lot of integrals between all the different possible permutations of these 25 Gaussian basis functions. So um, it gets quite complicated. So um, tells us some more information about the molecule here. Da, da, da. Then right here, it's calculated the nuclear repulsion energy for us. So in water, we've got a oxygen nucleus that you know, has a certain number of protons and two hydrogen atoms. And so based on the distances between those, it calculates the total repulsion between those positive charges. Then it's going to summarize for us the different controls that we set, or it will tell us what the default values are. And so here they are. These are all parameters that we can set in the dollar sign control group. Um, some of them we did set. Some of them have been set by defaults. And the same thing for system options. This controls how the calculation will be done, time limits, that kind of stuff. And here it says something about any properties that we input. And any integral transformation options, integral input options. Then it tells us the point group is C1, which means no symmetry. And um, then it tells us we're going to do a stationary point location run. So here it starts obtaining the initial Hessian. We're going to get that from a guess. And here's some uh, criteria that it uses. It's just spitting out some more information for you. Then it says it's beginning the geometry search for n search equals 0. So coordinates of all atoms are, so these are the initial x, y, and z coordinates. Then it tells you it's going to calculate the one electron integrals. And here's the step CPU time. That's how long it took to do that, 0.01 seconds to calculate all those integrals. Now then we're going to guess what the molecular orbitals are. Remember when we do an SCF calculation, you first have to guess what the coefficients are. And then you optimize those, trying to lower the energy on each iteration. So here are the initial guess orbitals guessed from the extended Huckel method. I'm going to go back that screen. You see guess equals Huckel. So we're using the extended Huckel method to do this. And so here are the orbitals. Let me tell you what these numbers mean up here. These are the occupancies. So remember, each orbital can hold at most two electrons. And we follow the off-bow principle. We put two electrons in the lowest energy energy molecular orbital and we work our way up to the highest energy molecular orbital. So this tells us that we've got two electrons in the first orbital that we're going to see, two electrons in the second, and so on. So here's the first orbital and games automatically will order the orbitals from low energy to high energy. So um, you'll see these, this is our lowest energy at negative 30 Hartree's. The next molecular orbital, molecular orbital number two, has an energy of negative nine Hartree's. So what is all this stuff? So each one of these rows represents a particular uh, basis function. And remember, we have to optimize the coefficients. So out in front here, these are the coefficient values. So these are the coefficient values that were guessed by this Huckel guess. So these coefficients then define a particular molecular orbital. And we put in 25 basis functions. So we're going to get out of this process 25 molecular orbitals. So here they all are. Good, so now we're ready to do the two electron integrals. So it talks about doing the two electron integrals. And it tells you how many of these, this is kind of an interesting number, that's why I'm pointing this out. The total number of non-zero two electron integrals that you have to do, 36,329. So that's a lot of integrals to do. Good thing the computer can do them, because the computer can do them in 0.06 seconds. So that's pretty quick. OK, so now it's going to start doing the um, restricted hartree fock SCF calculations, so we're solving the Schrodinger equation. We're trying to find the set of those coefficients that make the energies as small as possible, and that's going to be our best guess for the wave function. So um, this video is running a bit long, so I'm going to stop it here, and we'll pick this up next time.